Well, good day all. I'm Graham Sanders, and I live in Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm trialling the honeypot hive system using the local species Tetragonia hocking's eye. This is a new series about the management of one of these hives. So, in this introduction, it's the introduction, I suppose. Yes, what am I going to do? Well, it's the 1st of September 2016. Weather's warming up, minimums about 19, maximums 26, 27. So everything's looking good. Now, there was a previous series I did on the induction where I trialled how to do an induction with these. It was all trial and error. Some things went right, some things went wrong. At the end, they came up with a design and that induction went for three months. What resulted in that three months? Well, I've got a wonderful hive here that has brood in it. And it has been separated this morning from its mother hive. That's this hive here. And you can see there's no pipe there or any connection. Now we'll explain why in a minute. But to show people what we've got, there is a ventilation hole in this hive and that's round the back here as you can see important for the hive the hive structure that we've got that we're going to manage i'll take the lids off so you can see it all so we take that off pull that out lay that down pull that out lay that down and Oh, I suppose I'll give you a peekaboo at what's at the top, I suppose. So, we'll get that right. So, as you can see, bees nice and active in the top. And the hive consists of, as you can see here, the entry tray at the bottom. I put extra storage for pollen. Three brood chambers. This top brood chamber has a vent hole going out to the outside. That's the setup. If you want to know why it was set up like that, go back to the previous series on the induction. I'm happy with this because it's got brood in it. It's got about, yeah, I'm trying to do this with the camera in hand, about that much brood, about half of that container is full of brood. That is enough. So, let's put this back together again, and then we'll discuss what's going on with this hive. So, we'll shove that in there. We'll put the little top bit on as well. Keep all the buzzy bees happy. Tell you what, you've got to be a master at two things at once here. Holding a camera and doing all this. Lid on. And so there we go. That's the hive, as you can see there. Now, the induction went well, and I've just separated it, or oh, probably about half an hour ago, from the main hive. Put the plug in. So this hive's now on its own. And we're going to manage it and see how it goes. Now, I've left the hive here, and I'll be leaving it here for about two weeks. Why two weeks? Well, what's happening if, as I stand back here and look, hopefully you'll see occasionally bees fly out of the wooden hive here, out of the entrance here, and they fly out. But all the foragers that are coming back, including the bees that fly out of here, come back in here. They come back at the front entrance because all this activity out the front, which I've been showing you, it just gets any returning bee instead of going into the entrance in the wooden hive sees the activity at the front and goes in there instead so what's happening at the moment is any bees leaving this and there's one leaving now and that's been going on for the last half an hour but none are coming back into this hive they get 
confused, there's another one leaving. So you can see they're all leaving, trying to establish where they're going, but none are coming back. They're getting sucked into here by all that activity at the front. And because they're getting sucked in by all that activity at the front, they're forgetting about the entrance in the wooden hive. So as you can see there, all these foragers that would do a whole hive are coming into the honeypot hive. And because they're coming into this honeypot hive, they're bringing in all the pollen, extra honey, so they're actually stocking that up to the detriment of the wooden hive. So this poor wooden hive's got to live off its stores now for a while. So, first part of management of this hive, separate it from the mother hive, leave it here for two weeks for the sole purpose of getting the stores up, using all those workers, thousands of workers, to store that up and allow this hive, this honeypot hive, to start to stand on its own two feet. So, that's the first stage of management. You don't rip away the hive straight away. Use the workers just to re-establish everything. One job they will do is they will make sure that there's a proper tunnel going up the centre. In other words, a nice defence tunnel starting at the front, running through right up. The tunnel that goes across to here, that's been blanked off. So they will chew that up, use it for pollen pots or whatever, and they will re-establish the main entry into the hive. So there we go. That's the initial management. You've seen the hive. Probably two weeks' time, we will move it, and I'll probably give you an update on that move.